first guest is a Food Network regular. He's a star in my eyes. And today he's making his favorite, you are, Korean barbecue short ribs. Please welcome back to our home our very good friend, Chef Jet Tilo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good to see you. So good to see you. Also hello, joining hello, us for your hello. delicious short ribs are two of our very favorite people from Thompson Square, Kiefer and Shauna Thompson. You're going to sing for us. Thank you guys. But well, we're going to feed you first. Wait, are you allowed to eat before you sing? Yeah. Okay, good, because you don't want to miss it. Like a lot. <laughs> you know, they're foodies as well. You know, they tell me after the shows, they sit there and watch Food Network. And, uh, you do? That's nice. That's we all connected. Nice. So, big fan, big yeah, there fan. There we go. Um, all right, so you, my friend, you're, you're, you're not very humble about your short ribs. As a matter of fact, when you yeah. decided to make this recipe, you said, I just want everyone in the world to know that I make the absolute best short ribs in the world. You're kind of painting me as like a not a nice person. I'm usually very humble, by the way, so let's get that not straight. Not about your But short not ribs. about these short ribs, because they're amazing. And here's the secret. Right when I was a kid, I would go over to my friend's house. It was a Korean family, and uh, he would he would invite me over to play and hang out. And I was just obsessed with watching his mom cook because she made the best short ribs ever. So I, I would like wander up and be like, two, two secrets. She said, "Jet, two secrets for short ribs." But number one, Asian pear. Okay. Right. And I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. And the other, and number two, cola. Cola. I know. It's like, let me. I'll get there. Let me get there. So, so Asian pear, two things. Phenomenal flavor, but there's enzymes in there that help break down meat and make it tender. So oh. it's adding the sugar for the caramelization and the flavor, and then it's helping tenderize tougher cuts of meat. But is that just an Asian pear? Could you use any? No, other pear? I heard that you had a little Greek Coke. I mean, you had a little Greek cola kind of trick as well. I did. When you said the cola, because yeah. in Greece, when I was doing the cookbook, yeah. the same thing. I learned a, a tip from one of the um, fishmongers there. He said the way to tenderize octopus is to boil it with cola. Mm. Boil it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then grill it. Because it tenderizes it. And then there's one more connector. So, uh, again, in Mexican cuisine, you know, traveling all through Mexico, carnitas. A lot, Same I know a thing. lot of chefs that use cola. So, yeah, let me show you how this all works. Okay, so, it's, pretty, it. it's pretty simple. So, first thing with Asian pear, I'm going to go old school and I'm going to grate. Could I do a, a, any yeah. other kind of pear? You can do, yeah, you can. And you know what? Pears are available all year long. Okay. There's bosk, uh, there's bartlets. So, any pear, even like really great, like honey crisp apples. And all of them will tenderize? No, it? no, no, not so much, but it doesn't matter because this kind of meat is so great so they okay. will give phenomenal flavor so, okay. so you don't need a lot like a food processor would have worked but uh, you know I, I need to work oh, out cool. I need some cardio <laughs> today I just gotta get it yeah in I gotta get it in when I can, can bro and I have so uh, you can help me with the rest if you okay. want um, so you'll do cola uh, soy sauce of course oh nice right and I'm gonna come in with a little bit of brown sugar okay. so like with Asian food remember you're always balancing five flavors hot sour salty sweet and savory Ooh, and oil? like sesame oil you got it. and like music some people are like, I don't really understand kind of getting all these flavors right. Think about every flavor as a note, and when you put them together right, they become chords. Or you think about if you're an artist, you blend kind of flavor, you kind of blend colors. So there you go, I got you. Right. Boom. There you go, that, do that. Yeah. And then um, you'll, you want to- Okay, so I did sesame seeds, sesame oil. <laughs> sesame, sesame, sesame oil, the cola, garlic. brown sugar, garlic. Really simple, there's only like five ingredients. And uh, no. that can go later. You can okay. do a little now, a little later. So once you, you want to pour right in so just pour to these uh, short ribs. Now I was going to say, these do not look like your typical short rib or the ones that I'm used to making. What kind of cut of beef is this? Yep, so um, short ribs kind of come from the mid part of the cow, a little lower. Um, so beef is usually either like too oh. tender, not a lot of flavor, or really, really tough with too much flavor. Short yeah. ribs are that perfect medium. You want to go to the butcher, you want to go to the market. Uh, these are the same short ribs that you get braised during the winter time, but they're cut a certain way. They're called flanken cut. Okay. So that means you cut them like through the bone instead of between the oh, bone. So they're about half inch. Again, just say short ribs, uh, flanken cut. Uh, usually they come three bone, just Super like that. And tender. how long do yeah. yeah. marinate? So, so because it's beef, you don't need to worry. I would go like two to four hours. You don't okay. need to go longer than that. Um, you could go, if you really like a lot of flavor, uh, you could go overnight? as long as overnight without a problem. And then check it out. This is this is what it looks like. This is how they come out of the fridge. But you also dry them. You yeah. pat them dry before you put them the on the The whole thing about marinade is the job of marinade is to penetrate into the meat, right? The problem, if you if you don't pat your your, your meat down before you grill it, uh, you'll get a big old kitchen uh, smoke right. bomb. You know what I mean? Which is what you do. I'm just gonna say. Right. Yeah. So two tips. No, I like that. Right, the tips are basically <laughs> pat Makes dry. Like you're doing something. Yeah. And then oil your grill, pat dry. And I'm obsessed with pan spray. Like my, my, my wife is like, dude, you use too much pan spray. It's great for everything. So you oil the grill down, check it out. Shauna just got a facial. Yes. I'm so sorry. We have that same conversation yeah. so, at home. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you pat it dry, 
dry, does it also help with the caramelization it, and getting it kind of crunchy on the you outside? You hit it, Deb. You always okay. ask me because you know the you know how to cook, right? <laughs> all this all this marinade with all the sugar and all the ingredients in it. Uh, if it goes right into a hot pan, it's just basically gonna gonna start smoking and then basically burn the rib. Yeah. Get that all off. Let the pan do the work. Three, four minutes. I'm really just looking for color. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, I On want each a nice side? grill mark. Ooh, look at that. I got a nice grill mark. On each side, so I can do the crosshatch. You re recommend patting dry all meats that you marinate? Pat dry all just... meat in a super wet marinade. Anytime you're wow. marinating meat wow. and there's a super wet marinade, pat it dry and keep yourself from getting this you're craziness. Like a failure. Right. No, stop it. But check it out. Just show us so you can learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now watch. I, I've kind of crosshatched them, you're and all of a sudden, if you could see yeah. through the smoke. Oh, look at that. If you could well, see through the smoke. Look at that. Right. It's a work of art in there. Dude, it becomes that. So we basically could do any sort, any cut of meat with this marinade in this style. You bet. If you like a piece of steak, it's going to work beautifully here. Uh, Ribeye, um, filet, New York strip, all of them are oh going to play gosh, that gorgeously. Amazing. That's amazing. Serve it up with a little bit of white that, rice. Does that your bread? friend's mom know that this is that you're inspired by her? Yo, I'm still paying her royalty. <laughs> I was just going to say. Today, I was just gonna say you're man. Gonna hear from her. Yeah, she, she is so proud. Like, oh, Jet oh. T, those are my recipes. Oh my now, God. Now, Jen, I know you got a lot of fans out there in the world, but one of your biggest fans, especially these short, I know these are the best short ribs in, in the world. Yeah. In the world. Is that yeah. what we said? Right. In, in the, the world. world. But your son loves these, and he loves to help you with them. Is that correct? We are a Aww. cooking family. Ren is the meat eater. Amaya is the carb eater. Uh, and Aww. Allie does all the pastries. Oh, my gosh. So, stop. So there they are. Them. So, yeah, this is the photo shoot from our upcoming cookbook next year. And, yeah, we, we, we cook hard. Wow. That's as we say. Okay, well, Tila you brought Amaya here, and we cook together right. with Amaya next yes. time when you come back with a cookbook. Will you bring the two, both of them, Ren and Amaya, and we'll do it in the kitchen. Done deal. I love it. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, you bet. It was so chef. much fun. I'm glad you that. And of all the short I'm ribs I've tasted in the world, these are the best. In the whole world. I'm just saying, I haven't tasted them all, but I'm going to back you up a little bit on that one. <laughs> you don't need to now. You've, you've done the best.